Hello, Chef AJ here. So once a month, I answer questions from the people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program. And I thought I would just stream it to all my other platforms rather than having to do a live in YouTube and a live in this group. So I have 18 questions that were asked by the people in the group that we've collected. And of course, if you have questions live, I'd be happy to answer those as well. So let's get started. I did try to go live the other day just as a test. So I apologize. It was just kind of boring. So I'll probably delete that. Oh, hey, Jen. Hi, Jennifer and Kelly and Jean. And this is so cool because I, it shows like some of you are watching on Facebook and some are watching on YouTube. And some of you are watching on both at the same time. How is that possible? Wow, lots of people. So I'll get started with the questions. And if you have questions live, I will do my best to get to them as well. All right, so the first question is from Aaron. And oh, by the way, uh, John Pierre, who also runs the Ultimate Weight Loss Program with me, will be doing this, uh, um, I believe, on the 22nd. So he doesn't have capability to live stream to all the different places. But some of these questions are more geared for him. So I'm going to defer to him and his expertise. So there, oh, you're so welcome, Susan. Thanks for all you do. Okay, so, so Aaron says, are there any special considerations for an ultra athlete? Do I need overt fats or salt? Should I try to incorporate beans for extra protein? So again, this would be a perfect question for John Pierre. And John Pierre, if you don't know who he is, he is a nutritional and fitness guru. He's trained lots of celebrities, including Ellen DeGeneres, and he is very reasonable to hire for a private consultation. As a matter of fact, it's $75 for 30 minutes, which is, is very reasonable. And I, when you are trying to do something like that, I would really consult with an expert like him. So, you know, my understanding is that, that as far as salt is concerned, you need maybe need sodium if you're sweating a lot, but why does that translate to salt? So one of the things I've heard JP suggest to people before is to take celery, juice it, freeze it into ice cubes and use that in your water. So you're getting sodium without getting salt. This is something he can help you with more in detail because he's worked with elite athletes, military, FBI. So he's really, really good at, at helping you tweak your diet and your fitness for that. Do you need overt fats? Well, I don't know why you would necessarily need overt fats if you weren't eating them before, but you maybe need more calories and you can certainly get them from starch. You don't necessarily have to get them from fat. You can, but I'm not sure why, because you're doing a lot of athletics, you would need that. If you look at who are those Indians, the Tarahumara that Dr. Esselstyn talks about, they don't, as to my understanding, they don't need any added fat and they run miles and miles and miles. But I really think that you do need to talk to somebody like a John Pierre. It doesn't have to be John Pierre, but somebody that's not just a trainer at the gym that's going to tell you to eat a paleo diet like many of them do or a keto diet, somebody in the whole food plant-based world. Another recommendation, if you don't want to talk to John Pierre, would be to talk to a registered dietitian. And the one I think that would be really wonderful uh, for somebody that is an ultra athlete is the one that actually worked on the movie, The Game Changers. If you haven't seen it, by the way, please see it. And his name is David Goldman. And uh, if you're interested, I could get you his contact information, but he does do private consultations and he's worked with many, many elite athletes because your question about beans for extra protein, again, not my area of expertise. From what I understand, you need more calories if you're if you're working out intensely, but it doesn't necessarily have to come from fat or from protein. You just need more calories. So Gloria is saying, are you saying celery has sodium? Absolutely. Dark all dark leaf dark leafy greens or vegetables have sodium as a matter of fact. So uh, I look stunning. Well thank you. <laughs> That's the lights I have I've been, inter been interviewing all day for the real truth about weight loss summit. Okay, so Kathy says, my naturopath suggests that I take vitamin K with my vitamin D. Otherwise, it can cause calcium deposits. Any thoughts on this? Again, not my area of expertise at all. Supplements, I would ask a plant-based doctor. I mean, there's lots of them that really do wonderful consultations. There is all the doctors at True North, of course, both the naturopathic ones, both the medical doctors. You know, you can always have a free consultation with Dr. Ellen Goldhammer at True North to see if the True North Health Center is right for you. I actually interviewed a doctor today that was fantastic for the Real Truth About Weight Loss Summit in Santa Rosa named Dr. Rick Dina, who knew all about supplements. And one of the things he was saying is that we don't supplement unless we know what we're supplementing. So like a lot of people just take fish oil, but they don't know even know what their levels are. And he talked about how you could get your levels of, of your fatty acids tested to see if you're even deficient of them. 
So, you know, I am not a fan of supplements uh, there. I mean, not, obviously I am a fan of B12 because people following a plant-based diet need to take B12, anything else, I think you really need to know what you're supplementing. And so I haven't heard this. There's a wonderful book on bone health by Amy Joy Lanou called Building Bone Vitality that I think may discuss this. So, and again, the whole vitamin D thing is controversial, you know, it, depending on who you talk to in the plant-based world, you know, if you look at some of the work of Dr. Pam Popper and Dr. John McDougall, they have, uh, she has YouTube videos specifically on vitamin D and he has articles on his McDougall newsletter. They're not a fan of even supplementing with vitamin D. And I'm not going to give my opinion on it because I'm not a doctor. My feeling is, is you don't supplement until you know what you're supplementing and your supplement according to the doctor. So I would definitely get a second opinion on this because this is not something that I've actually heard of. Uh, you know, and again, you know, I don't know if you're coming to, I was going to say to the conference in May, but I just realized Dr. Goldhammer couldn't come because he has to go on a vacation with his wife in Africa. This is the first time we're not having them. So it's not the lights. You look great. My goal is to look as good as you. Well, thanks. Uh, okay. The lights help. I, I got to say they do help. Okay. So Let's see. Kim Williams. Now, Kim Williams, you're not like Kim Williams, the past president of the American Cardi uh, College of Cardiology, are you? Are you that Kim Williams? Okay. So uh, uh, Tamara's question is exercise. Again, this is this would be really good for I'm not the exercise expert. I'm I, I'm new to exercise myself. I didn't start until I was about 51 years old. And I just interviewed the shares eyes about that and how important it is to preventing Alzheimer's. So I'm even more gung ho about that. So tomorrow's question is exercise suggestions for the extremely morbidly obese movement hurts, but one has to start somewhere. So again, having a consultation with someone like JP would be great. David Goldman also is an exercise physiologist, so he can do the nutrition and fitness as can JP. Uh, David Goldman is an RD. JP is not, but he's very, very knowledgeable, has done this for over 30 years. So whatever you did, I would, I would start somewhere with, even if, even if it's just a physical therapist, you know, there's something that everyone can do. I do a type of yoga called restorative yoga. And as long as you can get up, get on the floor and get up, you can do it. There is somebody in the class that is morbidly obese. I would estimate about 400 pounds and they can do it. So there's always going to be some kind of exercise you could do just there was a man who was 700 pounds that started doing yoga you could find him on the internet and you you have to start somewhere but just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything so you obviously you have to be aware of pain because you're carrying more weight and that's why water exercise can be extremely beneficial for well for everybody people overweight but also people with joint pain or you know any kind of compromised knees or things like that because the, you know the water you don't it's just better for that. You don't feel the, uh, you're not, you're not doing like, um, what's the word? Sorry, it's late and I've been doing this all day, but water exercise is great. Even if it's just walking across the pool at the YMCA starting somewhere, but I would definitely work with somebody to get started and maybe a physical therapist would be a good place to start. You know, there's like, for example, um, you know, in the mastery program, JP teaches people like band exercises. We have a question on that. Even if you're overweight or obese, you know, you're, you hopefully can use your hands. You can do some of these band exercises. You can do weights. Uh, Shada, who was one of the very first people who lost, uh, you know, a lot of weight in the ultimate weight loss program. She lost more than I weigh. She lost over 120 pounds. She was in a boot the first year, the whole year that she was losing weight. And she still was able to lose tons of weight because, and exercise, but she did different workouts, which worked with JP, did upper body things. And she said she got some of the hardest workouts when she did that. So I would definitely hire somebody. It is really, really worth it. And consider any kind of water exercise, water aerobics, uh, just even getting in a pool, but doing something would be really, really helpful. If you can walk, doing some walking within your uh, capability and realize you don't have to like go from complete inactivity to like running a marathon. There are steps you can take in between and even just getting up every hour from your chair and doing doing something, just moving, movement, movement throughout the day. So definitely start somewhere, but I would definitely, definitely talk to somebody professional about that. Should we watch sodium or salt? Gloria is asking live. So added sodium. So in other words, my recommendation is not to eat any processed food because that's where most of the sodium is. It's actually, there's more sodium 
or more in bread than even on potato chips because it's hidden. So I don't personally add any salt to my food. It does sneak in occasionally through maybe a boxed almond milk or once in a blue moon when I'm eating at a restaurant or somebody's house, but you, you wanna watch for both. And the truth is, is if you eat enough calories from whole natural food, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, avocado, if you can handle those, you will get enough, enough milligrams of sodium per day. Would you recommend I hire help to figure out how to cure my osteoporosis? And uh, yeah, absolutely. I recommend that you get a consultation with a plant-based doctor. And there is a website, plant-based docs, I believe it's .com, I don't think it's .org, where you can put in your zip code and how many miles that you're willing to travel and see if there's one. And if there's not, so many of them do consults. All of the doctors at True North do phone or Skype consults, Dr. Michael Clapper. The, the list is growing depending on where you live, certain ones can do it depending on what state you live in. So I, I would absolutely definitely get a consultation with one of them. And who knows, you may be able to find one where you are. How many calories do you think you consume a day? You know, I don't count calories. I practice calorie density, but the few times that I've put it in chronometer, just like on a plane where I'm thinking, oh, there's no way I'm going to get enough calories today. It's, it, I, I guess 17 to 1900 if I had to guess, but I don't count calories. I eat probably three to four pounds of vegetables, about three to four pounds of starch, and maybe a pound of fruit. So that's usually about 1900 calories. Okay. Ah, Heather saying, Dr. Linda Carney is a great consult for osteoporosis and help my plant-based friend really overcome her challenges. Great. Yeah. So all the plant-based doctors are wonderful. It's just a matter of which ones can do consults because sometimes uh, depending on where they're licensed, it, it also depends what it is, if they're actually prescribing or not, but I would definitely, definitely have one. Anyway, and plans for coming down under. No, I'm not after after April 4th, I'm not traveling anymore. So if you want to see me, you got to come to my conference in Palm Springs, May 15th to 17th. I'm, I'm completing my contractual obligations of these next few trips. I have two to Mexico, uh, one to Florida, and one to uh, in Texas, April 4th, and then I am staying home. Oh, thank you, Bibi. Oh, South Africa, how cool is that? I didn't think anybody would be watching live. All right. So another question from Aaron, again, that I think you might need to talk to a person like JP or David Goldman about. I'm 47 years old and I'm an ultra runner. I train anywhere from six to 13 hours a week, depending on the season. I stay away from all overt fats because they are definitely trigger foods for me. I am SOFAs free. SOFAs means sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt and LOTRL, which means left of the red line. That's my calorie density chart, except for I eat dates when I go out for runs longer than two hours. As long as I'm eating enough calories, do I need to worry about taking in enough salt, protein, or fats? So I guess this is a a more uh, in-depth question of the one that you'd ask further about that. So again, I, I would say, since I don't know for sure, I'm going to say, I don't know. I think you just need to take in enough calories. The salt would be the electrolyte thing. And as I mentioned, a lot of people use those drinks like Gatorade, where you can make your own much healthier without all the sugar. And JP, I've heard him recommend just taking celery juice, freezing it into ice cubes and putting that in your water bottle. But I do think you would want to ask him about that, about if you do need additional protein for the runs and things like that. I mean, my understanding is you just, you need fuel and the fuel is carbohydrate. And a lot of people I've talked to have make, make, um, they have these like gel packs, but they're literally just sweet potatoes. Not that there's anything wrong with dates, but that's what I've, I've heard of a lot of people uh, using. Okay, but again, sorry that I can't answer that completely because it's not my area of expertise. But again, those of you that are in ultimate weight loss will hear these questions being answered again by John Pierre very soon. My Instant Pot makes yogurt. I've never done that because I hear I'm allergic to soy and they say that that's the best way to do it. What makes fried rice taste like fried rice from Chinese food places? Well, soy sauce, but I don't recommend that. But what I have found that works really well is the California balsamic vinegar, specifically the Gilroy garlic, the teriyaki, and the curry. Those are my three favorite for that. And you can get two free samples with your order if you put my name, Chef AJ, in the leave us a message box. Bailey's coming over. All right, let's see. 
if I missed anything. This is so cool if this is working. So I love it. A next question from Carol. Exercise suggestion using stretch bands and adapted for arthritic knee. So this is, again, you might want to see a doctor, especially a doctor that's a sports medicine doctor, or sometimes they're called physiatrists where they can give adapted exercises. And if you did a private consult with JP, he could definitely teach you that because he doesn't like to prescribe one thing for everybody. He likes to do it uniquely based on you. Or again, my recommendation would be David Goldman. Like I said, JP is very affordable, $75 for 30 minutes. I believe David Goldman is about the same rate, but I don't know if he does the 30 minute sessions. Uh, so with arthritic knee, I would definitely see a sport. Sports medicine doctors are great. I see one here in the desert and I love sports medicine doctors because at least the one I go to, he's, he doesn't do surgery. So his whole uh, uh, practice is to do things so that you don't need surgery. So he'll prescribe physical therapy or things like that. And that, and, and they often can also prescribe exercises for you. So if you can find a good sports medicine doctor, that's good. Marjorie says pineapple and Kathy Fisher's recipe. I'm not sure. Maybe that's an, maybe, oh, I think maybe she's answering Ron's question. What makes fried rice taste like fried rice? So maybe that's it. I've heard you say that anemia isn't related to diet. I, I don't remember saying that ever, to be honest. So I can't explain something that I don't even remember saying, but it's not uh, anemia. If you're bleeding somewhere, that's usually because you've got a problem that you need to address. And then you would want to go to the doctor for that. A lot of times it's menstrual periods with women, they get very heavy menstrual periods and they lose a lot of blood. So that's not necessarily related to diet. And uh, that is something you definitely want to get checked. Oh, Chuck says, I had a blast at Remedy. Oh, you voted for me. Thank you. You're my pal. I appreciate that. But, it, you know, it, it, it's really hard competing against somebody that does this for a living. I mean, I'm a chef, but I'm not working in the restaurants every day like him. But I still felt proud of my food, Chuck. And, you know, I think it still was pretty good. And it gave me the inspiration for some of the recipes I actually made for my holiday webinars. So that was kind of cool. I'm glowing. The reason I'm glowing is I wear this one kind of makeup that actually, that's what it does. This is the only thing I wear. It makes you glow. Do people with high, uh, Lisa says, do people with hypothyroidism that is being treated with thyroid hormones so the TSH level is normal need to avoid any specific foods? Not a doctor. I'm hypothyroid. I'm on thyroid medication and I was not told to avoid any specific foods. So uh, this is this is, this is a gold hammer thing. And if you guys aren't in Feel Fabulous Over 40, I would really recommend you try it for two weeks for free. As a matter of fact, because Wednesdays when we have the holiday webinar with all the cool recipes that are only available there. And then Doug Lyle comes on the following or actually in two weeks. But gold, Dr. Goldhammer is going to be coming on next month again. And these are the kind of questions that we get answered in that group because I'm not a doctor. So we try to have doctors every, at least every other week, not every week, because they're hard to get sometimes. Kelsey's asking about Bragg's liquid aminos. I don't recommend it. It's just salt. If you're going to really use something like that, I'd recommend the raw coconut aminos because they're a lot less sodium than the Bragg's. So thank you for all the yummy recipes. Thank you. Yeah, I, there was a problem loading episode 155 of Weight Loss Wednesday, and there was no Weight Loss Wednesday last week. So I'm hoping I can figure out what's going on with my YouTube. Okay. Uh, Heidi says, God, there's a lot, these are a lot of sports questions. So, so hopefully JP will come on and answer them. But Heidi says, when healing from an injury, does one need more protein? Dr. Isabeau suggested that to me a long time ago, but Dr. Goldhammer said, no, I always thought that when healing less food is best so the body can heal it. So that's a really good point, Heidi, because sometimes the body heals best when you do absolutely nothing and rest and don't even give it food, just do water fasting. You know, I, I love, I, Dr. it's funny, I was just talking to Dr. Dina today about Dr. Isabel and what a great guy he was. And the thing is, is I'm going to put my money on Goldhammer because I don't want to say that Dr. Ella Goldhammer is always right, but I got to tell you, so far, he's really never been wrong when it comes to health and nutrition. So, you know, again, you can certainly ask, JP will answer this and give his opinion, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know why you would need extra anything when you're healing other than maybe rest. So we'll let the doctors or JP answer that one. Uh, are California balsamics too sweet for food addicts? I can't tell you because I can't taste in your mouth and I can't feel in your brain. I think it, uh, it's, a, it's gonna be the flavor dependent and dose dependent. I find that the fruity balsamic vinegars are almost sickly sweet and I would only use them if I was making a dessert recipe, <laughs> excuse me, but I find that 
like the curry, for example, or the blazing habanero, I, I don't find them sweet personally. And also how much are you using? You know, I estimate that the most I've ever used in a whole meal would maybe be three tablespoons. The most I've ever used in a recipe was maybe four. And probably like if I'm eating a salad, I may be using two. And a lot of times I'm cutting with lime juice. So again, you know, food addiction is a one size fits most, not a one size fits all. I can't paint everyone with the same brush. So I cannot tell you if a particular product is gonna be triggering for you. But my advice is when in doubt, leave it out. Suzanne's saying cholesterol went from 250 to 170. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so Jan's saying, I've had a dry cough for three weeks. Yesterday, I went to the store and bought some cough drops to suck on so to keep me from coughing during a solemn ceremony. It didn't dawn on me until I was halfway through the bag that the drops had sugar on them. What UWL compliant recommendations do you have for coughs? Well, I would recommend some, something like you, you know, a lot of times using the neti pot, believe it or not, it can really help with a cough. It's, that's that thing where, you know, you put the saline solution and for some reason that really can help with a cough. But, you know, if you have a situation where you absolutely can't cough like me when I'm doing a recording, I mean, there are cough suppressants you can get from doctors. The thing about a solemn ceremony is my understanding that it, from, I, I have friends that are clergy, rabbis and priests is that people of faith, they, they do make exceptions for people that are, that have medical conditions. So for example, if somebody can't take communion because they're gluten-free and there's no gluten-free communion wafers or they're a food addict, there are exceptions made for medical stuff or like people that are Jewish that cannot fast for medical reasons on Yom Kippur, they make exceptions. And so, you know, if you're sick and you had to cough, like, at faith would probably make an exception or maybe just don't go if your cough is that bad. But I would say that, um, you know, a cough suppressant is gonna work much better than a cough drop. So that's, if, if I was in a situation where for whatever reason I really couldn't cough, I would just ask the doctor for some kind of a cough suppressant. The thing is, is most of the stuff will have either sugar or fake sugar. So, you know, gargling sometimes with salt water could help. But, you know, maybe just don't go to these things while you're sick, because if you have a cough, maybe uh, even if you aren't contagious, whenever we cough, people think I have asthma. I haven't had it since I moved to the desert. But when I had it and I'd cough, people just and it was an asthmatic cough, nothing to do with an illness. Anytime you cough, people assume you're sick and they want to stay away from you anyway. So sorry, could be more helpful for that. But it's good that you were being mindful that you realized at some point that that these things did have sugar in them. So, at, you know, they do have sugar-free cough drops. I'm not really sure they really work, honestly, but if they work, that's great. Um, I would probably, if that was me, do a sugar-free, I mean, they're, you know, the sugar-free stuff is just as bad, but, you know, there might be, if you look online, a, a brand that has no sugar in it whatsoever. And, and I'm thinking that I've heard this question before and there might be. Hi from, oh, Sandy says, hi from Buenos Aires. I love your recipes, thank you. Uh, what's, um, uh, Monica says, what's the fit fabulous over for? So, so in July with my partner, so the screen behind me is called the real truth about weight loss. It's a summit that I hosted this year in March that was produced by Toby from better life summits. And we started a membership website in July called feel fabulous over 40. It's a membership website that costs $27 a month, but if you join for the whole year, it's 147. So it's even less expensive than UWL comes to about $12 a month, but it's very comprehensive. So that's why we give people that want to try it free two weeks so that you can have time to see all the bells and whistles, which are, it's a meal planner tool. It's, they, they have, you, there's places you can find an accountability partner. We do a live broadcast just to the group every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So now we've probably done probably we've done 25 of them. Dr. Lyle comes on at least once a month. And then some other doctor will have Dr. We've had Dr. McDougall. We've had Dr. Goldhammer answering people's questions. One of the series every month is with an, it's um, uh, a success story. And so you get to ask questions to the people live during this time. And it's, it also has what's called a knowledge vault where it, it took months, months, if not almost a year to build this system. So a lot of times people have questions and the, it's been answered many times. So whereas I can't really say to you, well, episode 142 of Weight Loss Wednesday, I answered it, the, the knowledge vault does. So if you were in Feel Fabulous and you had a question like about stevia or air pop popcorn, 
instead of having to ask it over and over again, you type it into the little box. And anytime I've ever answered it, it will take you right to that video. So I really encourage you to try it because it's free. And it's, I mean, it's not free forever. It's free for two weeks though. So if you'd like to try it, oops, I just switched my screen. Where are you guys? Okay, there we go. I was gonna type the link in how to register, but I believe it's www.feelfabulousover40.com slash register. Colin is saying honey and onion works for me as a cough syrup. Well, that's interesting. The onion part, especially just read the pleasure trap. It was a pleasure. I had the privilege of being the voice actor on that. So it's a great, Oh, and Julie is saying, I appreciate your yoga videos that are available in the feel fabulous over 40. Thinking of reporting more. Oh, that's another thing. So we, yeah, we, there's just, there's so much in it. It's just, I, you know, the thing is I teach yoga here in my community, Julie, and because of the type I do, I don't know that many more poses, honestly, that I could give you in this particular modality of yin yoga that I do. And truthfully, I like to do fewer poses and hold them longer. Uh, Lisa saying that the knowledge vault and the FFOF, which is abbreviation for Feel Fabulous Over 40, is super. Thank you. That was Toby's idea and it took a long time to build. Uh, Sarah, tuning in for support and general reminders of why I'm making the change. It's been a discouraging few days and I need to step out of it. Thanks for being here tonight. You're welcome. Mint tea always helps when I have a cough. Yeah, even lemon water, sometimes just hot liquids. Lately, I just can't seem to eat enough, Jennifer says, because I just don't feel hungry and nothing sounds good. Is there a suggestion you might have to help me get enough fruits and veggies when I just don't feel like it? You know, unless... I mean, if, if you're have, if you're not eating because you're depressed, then look into why that is. But if you're just not hungry, don't eat. I mean, our ancestors went through famine for months and not, not that you should not eat. I mean, just as long as you're hydrating and have enough energy to do your uh, activities of daily living, why force food if you're not hungry, you know, or, and that would be a case, maybe make a juice or a smoothie. Gloria says active yeast bottle says zero sodium. Would this be considered a hidden sodium? I don't know, but what's what's an active yeast bottle? So not sure what that is. Okay. Um, let me get back to some of the questions here. Oh no, Nancy, you have the flu. That's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> okay, now I have a cough because I'm answering questions about a cough. Uh, Jan says, are we supposed to take supplements if we do not eat beans? Again, this is a question for, you know, even when we have these doctors on Feel Fabulous, like Dr. Sabatino, they, they're not really comfortable ask, answering your personal questions because they're not your doctor. And that's why I think it's important to have a plant-based doctor. I do. I mean, I don't have one that I see locally, but I have one that I, you know, I have Dr. Petra Sultana at True North that I do phone consults with when I have questions like this. I know that, uh, you know, I haven't been able to eat beans for many, many years because of slash allergy intolerance, I do take lysine, which is what beans have, but not because I don't eat beans. I was told by a dermatologist many years ago, I was getting cold sores and I actually got two in one month and they're very painful and they're very unsightly. And this is when I was still eating beans many years ago. And she told me to start taking lysine. I can't remember how much I take the pure botanicals. That's what I get from, that's what they sell at True North pure encapsulations, excuse me. And this was probably six years ago and I take lysine every day and I haven't had a cold sore since. But again, I don't, I'm not a doctor. I can't prescribe. I would ask your doctor, but I've never heard anybody say you have to take lysine because you don't eat beans. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, uh, and Amanda says, no question, but I just wanna say thank you for taking the time to do these. I know you answer a lot of the same questions, but it's really helpful to hear them. Thank you. You know, I, 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 that's why I don't like to do a Q and a when I, when I'm cranky or hungry, because, because I already said that, but, but it's true. Repetition is the mother of skills. So that is fantastic that you said that. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Marie says, I guess I am just curious about the effects of long-term compliance on those that struggle with food addiction. I don't understand the question, Marie. What do you mean about the effects of long-term compliance? I would imagine that it would be a profound effect and it would be a positive effect, but I guess I need a little bit more information as to what you're going for asking these questions. But then you have another question that says, who would, uh, for the UWL members who would say that they our slash were food addicts, does this addiction ever end and are they then able to not care what environment they are in? For example, has Chef AJ and those like her been compliant for so long that if non-compliant food were in her house environment, she would not struggle? 
Uh, you would have to ask other successful people, but I would completely struggle if there was not compliant food in my house. The environment is, in my opinion, the number one predictor of your success. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. And the only reason I've been able to be successful is because I live in a clean environment. Uh, the few people, and I say few because of the thousands of people I've worked with, I have only met three that have actually lost weight and kept it off for you know more than a year living in an unclean environment. And uh, they're primarily very disagreeable people, but they even say they struggle, that it's not easy for them. So I, you know, I can't speak for everyone. I cannot say that if you live in an unclean environment, you will fail. I will say it's going to be exceedingly more difficult. And I will also say that I have never met the person in a clean environment that didn't succeed very easily. So no, I would not be able to succeed at all in, a, in an unclean environment. You have to work harder on your environment than you do yourself is what Dr. Doug Lyle says. Dr. Carrie Saunders says, hang hey, around a barbershop, just a matter of time until you get a haircut. Dr. Tom Campbell says, if you have temptation anywhere in your environment, you will fail. So these are from the experts and that has definitely been my experience. Let me see if, uh, cause this is going fast. So I want to be able to, and I also see your live questions. Okay, uh, lemon, Linda says, lemon ginger hot tea helps the throat, drink lots of fluids. I even cook veggies to, I love the, the broth from vegetables. It's called pot liquor and I love it. Water room temperature, warm with feels better, water with lemon. Uh, recently had your same question. This has helped me. Thank you. So Chloe says, general tips for coming off extreme portion control diet. I've only eaten five bites of food for breakfast and five bites for lunch, two months straight. Wow, that's that's intense. I would definitely have a consult with Dr. Doug Lyle. I would definitely watch the YouTube video we did about weighing and measuring the food because that's uh, that's that's rough. And those those way of eating is that is absolutely not sustainable. And I recently interviewed Dr. Furman for the Real Truth About Weight Loss Summit, and he says if what you're doing isn't sustainable, it's not going to be perfect. And yeah, the weighing and measuring programs are just really, really, in my opinion, horrific. Uh, and when you understand calorie density, as you know, Dr. Bowles, who I recently interviewed, teaches, and all the wonderful plant-based gurus, it doesn't matter how much you eat or when you eat or why you eat. It just matters what you eat. And nobody got fat from eating too much vegetables. So uh, this is, you, I would definitely, Chloe, have a session with Dr. Doug Lyle. His website is esteemdynamics.com. And you could also call into his podcast live at uh, Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time and ask his advice. But I think you're gonna need some kind of help with that because these, you know, a lot of people come from these, these programs that just, they're like afraid to eat food, even vegetables. And they really mess with your mind, I gotta tell you. Um, Flora saying, for the past few hours, I've been looking how to join your program. Do you have a, pro okay, so you know what, I, I've got to, let me just take myself off screen. Well, I, mean, I guess I'm still on screen to you, but I am not on screen to me. I'm looking for this. I'm going to put this in the chat box right here. So here you go. I'm going to put it in right now. I think it'll work. Yeah. Oopsie. Okay. Sorry. It's hard to do two things at once. There we go. Okay. Oopsie. All right. So there we go. That is the link. Click that and you can write it. She answered. Thank you. Who answered, Chloe? Okay. Do you do coaching for your program? So I don't do private coaching anymore, Floor. Uh, John Pierre does. I do it only for people that are in the mastery program, which is about to come to an end. And we only do that in, in the fall. Linda says, Great to have you live while I can watch you. Love you, Chef AJ. Thanks for your heart and soul helping others. Thank you. What form is B12 best? Um, they talk about the two kinds, methocobalamin and cyanocobalamin. Dr. Goldhammer recommends methocobalamin. That's what I take. I take a thousand milligrams, maybe it's micrograms every day. I think it's micrograms and you don't need that much, but if I don't take it every day, I don't remember what day I took it. My husband prefers the drops and he takes the 5,000 and we both have the brand Pure Encapsulations. Gaia says, I'm so happy I caught you live. I didn't own an Instant Pot until I found you a few weeks ago. Thank you for the recipes. I tried the sweet potato chili, mushroom chili, and more. I'm a cult follower. Thanks. Would, Jennifer says, would you ever be willing to help create recipes or tell me where they are if you already have for a whole food plant-based Hanukkah party? Um, I, would, I would look on the website. It's called Vegetarians in Paradise. Zell Allen has a lot of them for Hanukkah. She generally doesn't use oil. Uh, don't know 
you know, I know she uses sugar and salt and flour. I don't have any Hanukkah recipes. I just on YouTube, potato waffles would be my version of latka. And that's what all I have. Suzanne says, what is, what is the B vitamin not provided by food? I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. I only see a 12 week program on that site. No, there's a, um, there, there's a ongoing program. I, I, I see the click, click the link that I said. Um, let's see, I thought I just saw one. Are you Latina? No, I'm, I'm Jewish. And, uh, but thank you for the compliment. Latinas are beautiful. I, a lot of people think, used to think I was Italian. Some of them, my, oh, okay. Okay. I can explain this. I love you. Some of the recipes make me believe you are. Well, for years, my sous chef is a Latina. And it wasn't, well, she still is. She's not my sous chef only because I moved. And I, you know, I taught a lot of, I, and teach a lot at Rancho La Puerta. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing two back-to-backs there for eight days and eight days. So I'm leaving Saturday for eight days to teach cooking at Rancho La Puerta to come home for a few days. And then I go back. I probably should just stay there the whole time, but I want to be home in between. So, and also, you know, living 50 years in LA, you know, that's what we eat is Mexican food. And actually Mexican food is probably the easiest to go sugar, oil, and salt free because it, you don't have to have the flavor coming from those things. You can have things like, you know, chilies. And, and so I think it's the easiest. Do you have any ideas on menopause? I would say eat a whole food plant-based diet. Absolutely do not drink coffee and alcohol, get a lot of exercise, watch the real truth about weight loss summit, hear what Dr. Linda Carney has to say about it, get your body to an ideal weight and uh, maybe you won't have symptoms. I haven't had any yet. Devin says, I've had a couple of sessions with Dr. Doug Lyle, who has helped me to understand that I'm an 80 percenter. I am not good when I set my sights higher as my ego jumps in. However, I generally sit between 90 and 95. Yeah, he's brilliant. I love her. Uh, Chuck says, thank you for your candor about the environment. You speak the truth. Kimo Sabi. Yeah, it is the truth. People don't like to hear it, but it's the truth. You know, Dr. McDougall also recommends B12 methylcobalamin. Jessica says, so great. Okay. I'm still plant-based, but still can't lose weight. And little fat, when you say little fat, how little fat? Because a little fat can make it not possible for you to lose weight. I would say to you, Abby, first of all, have you read my book? And then the second question is, have you tried my program? You can try it two weeks for free, but I've never seen anybody not lose weight on this way of eating. When you say little fat, what does that mean? You know, go on a no added fat diet, because if you have fat on your body, you're not going to become fatty acid deficient. Can you repeat the book suggestion? It's not a book suggestion. Well, actually there is a book called vegan for the holidays by Zell Ellen, but her blog is vegetarians in paradise. Okay. Let me get back to my page for a minute. Um, Please talk about, uh, Sherry says, please talk about de novo lipogenesis. Some plant-based doctors say it's possible, it is possible to turn carbs into fat. Dr. McDougall says you have to eat over 5,000 calories a day, which nobody really can do. Truth, please. Where is, oh my God, I hate to, I don't know if I can get up right now to get the piece of paper from, oh, it's frustrating. I, that's the thing. I'm tethered to here. Yeah. Um, well, according to Dr. McDougall, you can't. And he actually sent me, an e sent me an email saying it just can't be done. Pigs can do it, but human beings really can't readily convert carbohydrate or protein to fat. It takes only about 3% of the calories in the fat to turn it into body fat. And if you could turn the carbohydrate, it would take about 30%, but it's really, really very inefficient and it's very rarely done. So usually when uh, people are saying carbs make them fat, it's because there's something else in their diet, like some nut butters or some tahini. And, you know, the potato seems to get blamed for everything. And uh, maybe we'll have Dr. McDougall back on FFOF and he can answer that. I believe he did answer that in the interview I just did with him on the Real Truth About Weight Loss Summit. And he certainly answered that in his book, The McDougall Program of Maximum Weight Loss. Um, making bread, the bottle of active yeast said it hasn't. Yeah, I don't know because I don't recommend bread or flour. So I don't know. Uh, Kathy Hester recently posted a potato cabbage latka recipe. And oh yeah, Kathy Hester is great. And she, she always helps people with their special diet and how to modify her recipes. Um, having a hard time figuring out the sauces to put on vegetables. Have you done the, have you have my book, The Secret Self and Weight Loss? Have you tried all the sauces in there? I've got several cheese sauces. I've got a red bell pepper sauce. I've got yummy sauce. I'm trying to think of all the different ones that I have. Okay, back to here. Sherry says, how to stop cravings in the middle of cravings? Not how to prevent them, but where do you stop yourself from, but where, what to do to stop 
yourself from getting junk food, nothing in the house, I just go to the store. Well, uh, what you do is if you live with somebody, you give them your keys and your wallet and you tell them they can't give it to you till the next morning. Or they actually have safes from safes that you can put your keys and your wallet in and they're time safe. So like, for instance, you decide you're going to finish eating at seven o'clock and you that, that safe won't open until 7 a.m. the next day when you have to go to work. But sometimes you need to get enlist help for something like that if you truly are going out for it. But I wonder what you're eating, even though you say your environment's clean, are you eating any salt? Are you eating any kind of trigger foods that are, is making you um, needing to go out for those foods? And, you know, Often, this is where you can often get help by working with somebody like John Pierre, where you have a relationship where you can text him anytime. And that, you know, some people do need to use coaches to, to help uh, overcome food addiction or, or manage it at the very least. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Amanda's asking, I'm wondering if you have any advice for sticking to an elimination diet. I am used to the idea of abstinence for ultimate weight loss, but I can't stick to an elimination diet. I have eczema and really would like to take the time to do an elimination diet right, but so far have not lasted more than two to three weeks. Someone mentioned that Chef AJ did just sweet potatoes and zucchini for a while. Can you talk about why or how it went for you? Sure. So the elimination diet of all elimination diets would be water fasting and going to True North or Fasting Escape or Balance for Life so that they can really help with within conditions like eczema and finding out what food triggers are or allergies or intolerances. So I went on an elimination diet, probably it was like seven and a half, eight months when I got diagnosed with IBS and SIBO. And it just, I couldn't barely eat anything. So I, it was sweet potatoes and zucchini. And so it was pretty boring, but you know, what's interesting is that it really, and now those, that's my favorite food now, pretty much. It will probably sweet potatoes and broccoli, but I found different ways to prepare it. You know, I like, I, I could air fry the zucchini. I could steam it. I could puree it. I could eat it raw. I could spiralize it. So I found different ways to prepare the zucchini. And with the sweet potatoes, I did switch the variety of sweet potatoes. So I really actually didn't get bored because there were so many varieties and so many ways to cook them like mashed and into fries and roasted and steamed. So um, it actually wasn't so bad. One tablespoon of peanut butter. Oh my God, a half an avocado. Is that too much fat in a day? It's too much fat for the month. Yes, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Nobody should be eating peanut butter, even if they're not trying to lose weight because it can have aflatoxins. You got to read my book, Abby. You can get it. If you're not an Audible uh, subscriber, you can get your first book for free and listen to it. You can get it in the library for free. But yes, it's too much fat in a day, a week, a month, and a year if you're overweight. If you have a fat on your body, that's the fat you should be eating. Susan says, hello from San Francisco. Oil, salt, and MSG, not good, true. Okay. How come you don't recommend bread? Because it's a processed food. It's 1,500 calories a pound. It's not a, it's not a fruit or a vegetable or a whole grain. I don't recommend any processed foods. If you're not overweight, then maybe you could have some, but why would you eat a processed food instead of a whole food? Instead of eating bread, eat a whole grain. It's less calorically dense and it's, uh, yeah, I don't recommend bread. One sauce is good. Thank you so much. Okay, so uh, Dr. Goldhammer thinks the California balsamic, well, I don't think the California balsamic vinegars have any more grams of sugar than any of the other reduced brands. So let's not pick on California balsamic. All the reduced ones have pretty much the same amount of sugar. So that said, when the chefs at True North take whatever vinegar that he recommends and reduce it, which I've seen them do in front of me in recipes, it has the same amounts. So let's not be bashing particular brands. You know, you don't have to use the, the balsamics. It's just, it helps a lot of people, especially at the beginning. And, uh, you know, to, to eat these large amounts of salad and vegetables that he recommends. What is the name of your book? It's called The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. Suzanne is saying, I eat no fat and I've lost 30 pounds. Congratulations. That's how I lost my weight too. Okay, so let me go back to some of these questions. Okay. Uh, Misty says, what kind of foods do you tend to eat during winter? I would like to be able to eat foods that are in season. Also, are there resources that you know that you can point me to? So there is, and I can't think of it, and it's so hard for me to search while I'm online, but there is a, there is a website, if you just Google it, which will tell you lo about local eating and what to eat based on where you live. So the kind of foods that I tend to eat during the winter are what is available. So in other words, like there, I see watermelons now, they're not very good. I mean, 
you know, they have them, but they're not good because they're not really in season right now. The things that are in season right now are the winter squashes, the delicata, the acorn squash, the butternut squash. And sometimes you can get them other times of the year, but they're, they're so in season right now. And that's what I would recommend. Now, now it's possible to get everything all the time. And so that's just the way it is, you know, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Farmer's Markets. It seems like every, almost everything is available all the time, but what I tend to eat during winter are more warm foods because I, I'm get you know, it's colder. So I do eat soups and stews all year round, but I would say that in the summer, I eat a lot more fruit, uh, especially watermelon, just because it's so hot and it's so hydrating. Whereas in the winter, I don't want to say I eat heavier foods, but I tend to eat more, more seasonal foods, things that remind me of the season, like I've been eating a lot of cranberries, for example, and making cranberry relish or, or pomegranate seeds. So, you know, that's what I tend to, that's what I tend to personally eat during the winter. Okay. What do you eat when you feel like having a special treat? Well, that my favorite food is Hannah Yems and broccoli and in, that's my favorite food. So that's the treat. Then, you know, I always tell people, Marjorie, that having the slender body and the calm, stable brain, that's the treat. So I don't look at food as a treat anymore. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I guess like a treat would be taking out the champion juicer and instead of eating the fruit, putting it through and making ice cream, you know, do you need to eat beans on this? No, I don't eat beans. You do not eat to eat legumes. You do need to eat starch, but it doesn't have to be legumes. Do you use moisturizer? Do you, what do you use to moisturize wood utensils beside water? Um, so uh, I, I use the Holland Bowl Mill and he says like a walnut oil is the best. And that's what he recommends. Yes, yeah, Suzanne is saying there's an app for fruits and vegetables in season. Absolutely. Yeah, Thomas from California Balsamic is great and he is. Okay, let's get back to these questions. Lisa says, I have a friend that's done keto for three years, so bad. Anyway, she saw me and so I lost 15 pounds pretty fast with Chef AJ's recipes. She's gonna try it. She bought Chef AJ's book and she go cold turkey. She's been eating all fat and now I'm saying no fat. Just curious how Chef AJ would recommend to her. Thank you. I keep, you know, I don't know her and I think it's going to depend on her personality. Some people do better just diving in and some people do better leaning in. And I think it's going to be hard for her going from keto to whole food plant-based because she hasn't been eating any carbs. And the minute she eaten and eating un, even the whole unprocessed carbs, potatoes, rice, beans, fruit, the minute she eats those, her weight's going to go up because she's going to store about two pounds of glycogen and two pounds of water. So, you know, for her, I might even recommend a session with somebody like a Dr. Doug Lyle to help her transition or a JP, but you know, the diet that she's on now is, is mortgaging her health. I don't know why she's doing it. I'm guessing most people do it because it, it can result in quick weight loss, but uh, it's not a healthy diet by any stretch of the imagination. Even the vegan keto diet, vegan keto diet is not healthy. So, uh, you know, I guess that would depend why she's doing it. Is she, is she, is she going to transition a whole food plant base to lose weight? And if that's the case, then why? was she doing keto for three years if it's not working? So I need more information because you're, you know, if the keto diet has been successful and she is at her trim ideal weight now, and she goes to our way of eating, she's going to put on a few pounds. It's not fat that she's going to gain, but she is going to, the scale is going to go up and she's not going to like that. That's why working with somebody like a Dr. Lyle could, could really be helpful. Okay. All right. Uh, Jan has a question about when I have eaten to the right of the red line. Oh, well, no, not when. While I have eaten to the right of the red line since joining the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, I never cross over and have eaten animal products. I'm not tempted at all. Any thoughts on what makes those two barriers so different in the brain? Not a brain expert, the Shar's eyes are, I just interviewed them. But I think often for when people are, are vegans, it's often for multiple reasons. And one of the reasons is often it's an ethical component and it is also your identity. And so, you know, if a, a ve a somebody that's an ethical vegan could be very hungry. And if all that's offered, I'm not talking about like being deserted on an island and hasn't eaten in weeks, but they're, they're at a party or something or a restaurant and there's nothing but animal products. They're not going to eat it because they're an ethical vegan. Whereas going to the right of the red line and eating either processed food like sugar, flour, alcohol, or nuts and seeds and avocado, or, or you know, that's, there's no really ethical like reason for that. You know, it's, it, it's, you know, 
you don't compromise who you are as a person or your integrity for doing that. So I think it's, it's much more difficult because you don't have that component. I mean, I would have to ask you why you're vegan in the first place, because, you know, most people come to it for one of three reasons, the animals, the environment, or their health. And so, and also it, when, when you said eating to the red of the red line, what are you eating to the right of the red line? Because if you're eating a date or a raisin, you know, or a walnut, that's not going to compromise your health. Whereas eating, you know, maybe oil or sugar or flour will. So I'd like to know what you're eating when you're eating to the right of the red line. Also, there's the addictive component because food addiction is insidious and it's very difficult to overcome. And so there's always going to be the pull to go back and eat those foods. There's not really much of a pull eating most animal products. I mean, certain, the ones that are processed like bacon, those kind of lunch meats, pepperoni, cheese, of course, those have addictive components, but, you know, boiled chicken, you know, ground beef, those kind of things, you know, baked fish, those don't have the pull of the foods to the right of the red line, whether they're the processed foods or the high fat plant foods. So I think, I think because of the addictive piece and because generally people that are vegan, most of them have an ethical component, you know? If a person is nice and slender, is that amount of fat still unhealthy? You know, I, I don't think anybody should be eating peanut butter. Uh, if they wanna eat nuts, they should eat raw, unsalted nuts and seeds. Not, I mean, maybe almond butter, maybe tahini. So I still wouldn't recommend any amount of peanut butter. And is a half an avocado a day? I don't know. You know, a serving of avocado, according to the California Avocado Commission, is a fifth of an avocado. I wouldn't say it's necessarily unhealthy, but why do you need to eat all that fat? You know, why not try to get your calories from starch? That's what I would do. Okay, so I've got this page done. Let me check here to see if I missed any questions. Oh, this is nice, the muscle little emoji. Uh, Jody says, I've been doing the no process SOS free for about two weeks now, and I'm really amazed at how much better I feel and how it has helped my emotions. Yeah, that's what we call the calm, stable brain in UWL. Uh, let's see. Uh, doesn't the hail to the kale call for nut butter? I heard you say one tablespoon of peanut butter is too much as one tablespoon of almond or different. So, um, Hail to the Kale was written, that recipe book was written over 10 years ago before I had all the information I had now that I learned at True North from Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer. And there is a variation of it using beans instead of nuts. And again, it's not necessarily too much for somebody that doesn't have food addiction or weight problems, but it is too much for somebody that has fat on their body. So yeah, almond butter is definitely different than peanut butter uh, because, uh, well, peanuts are actually a legume, but the problem with peanuts is that you can't eat them unless they're roasted at high temperatures. So often they have something called aflatoxin. So I don't recommend people eat them. Well, peanut butter is very, very addictive. Whereas almond butter, it's not really that good. I mean, it's okay, but it's not peanut butter. Um, let's see. Susan says, I love the California balsamic, but when I had them with me at the table at True North over Thanksgiving, Goldhammer gave me a very, about, very hard time about using them. And he felt that the Asian vinegar they put out at True North has zero calories. The one they use for Costco is lower in grams of sugar and calories. Yeah, that, that's fine. You don't, I mean, I don't, I, I agree with Dr. Goldhammer on most things, but he doesn't have to treat people in the real world that are struggling to get any vegetables down. He's had 40 years to neuroadapt. And again, you know, you don't, nobody has to eat flavored balsamic vinegars. When in doubt, leave it out. You're amazing. Teresa says such a great live session tonight. Folks, please read Chef AJ's book, The Secret to Ultimate Weight Loss and join the Facebook group for 24 seven support, life-saving. Thank you. So I'm not in the Facebook group anymore of Ultimate Weight Loss or, and I've never been in and feel fabulous, but we have wonderful moderators and other types of interactions. I love Hannah Yams. I've had to drive 20 minutes to buy it. It's worth it. Yep, it absolutely is worth it. Uh, Lydia says, yeah, peanut is not a nut, it's a legume. I was on keto and I lost weight, but my numbers were very bad. My cholesterol is very high. I changed the whole food plant-based numbers are perfect. Uh, not, uh, if you don't eat beans, what do you recommend supplementing with? Do you eat lentils? No, I don't, I can't eat any legumes and I don't recommend supplementing with anything. Just eat enough calories from the starches that you like. Is white rice okay to eat? It depends. You know, we know that brown rice is healthier. I mean, if you're not a diabetic and, you know, I mean, there are some people that don't do as well with grains as they do say with the legumes or the, uh, the potatoes, sweet potatoes, winter squashes. I happen to love white rice and 
I eat it every chance I get, but it's not for everybody. Can somebody link me to the try for free two week program? Chef AJ recommended. If you just scroll up, Chloe, you'll see it. And I'm going to put it in the box right now again. And I'm going to get that for you. It's okay. And then it's feelfabulousover40.com slash register. There we go again. Okay. All right. Don't think the comments moving on my, are we supposed to be able to see them on Zoom? That, I don't know what you can see, BB. I know that I can see um, comments from both YouTube and Facebook, but it doesn't say which Facebook group it's coming from. People, Cindy says, why people doing the keto diet are claiming they are reversing diabetes and cancer? Well, because as bad as it is, it's still better than the standard American diet because they're taking out the processed foods. So they will have some health benefits in the short term, but they're mortgaging it in the long term. Well, this is an interesting question from Thick Vegan. What is your favorite food ever? It's, it's potatoes or sweet potatoes. Honestly, it's, it, you know, uh, I just, I love, I love the Hannah Yam. I really do. And the Japanese and I love air fries. So probably the Hannah Yam. Hannah Yam with broccoli though, together. Is the glycemic index something that needs to be considered when eating this way? That's funny that you mentioned that because that's one of the things we talked about today with Dr. Rick Dina. And I'm probably going to be interviewing the creator of the glycemic index soon, Dr. David Jenkins. You know, I think you have to more consider the glycemic load, unless you're literally doing mono eating where you're just eating a potato and just eating kale and just eating fruit. Most people don't eat that way. Most people eat multiple foods in one meal. So if we eat a potato, like we'll put things on it like corn or beans. And so what we're changing the, the, the glycemic index to the glycemic load. And so I don't think you have to really worry about it unless you're literally just eating one food at a time. So I don't think you have to consider it unless you're, you know, diabetic, then it can be more important. But for the average person or the person trying to lose weight that's not diabetic, they are, I don't think you do. Eating an envy apple right now. Yeah, they're the best. They are the best apple. Can you gain weight from high starch? Not if you're not eating fat. It's the fat you eat. It's the fat you wear. Okay. Um, Lisa says, I think you understand food addiction so well because you've suffered from it. Not many other leaders if any in the whole food plant-based world understand processed food addiction like you do, sometimes they are either too lax or too strict with it. Yeah, thank you. It's I think that they understand the science very well, but they've never suffered with it. So they don't understand why a flexible approach doesn't work for most people. And you're right, they've never, they've never been overweight, they've never had food addiction. And that so it's easy to say, eat a lot of nuts. I do. I and I'm not overweight, but they've never had that. Okay. All right. So let's get to a few more questions questions uh um, got a couple left okay so janet says since you don't agree with dr bredesen the end of alzheimer's and his suggestions of keto life which can be accomplished on a whole food plant-based eating what do you suggest for those in the early stages of alzheimer's well uh, as luck would have it janet i just interviewed dr dean shirzai and dr aisha shirzai the authors of the that, I thought their book was The End of Alzheimer's. Are you sure you have the name of Dr. Bredesen's book right? But anyway, they basically said it's junk science. And you'll have to watch the interview we did, but I took a lot of notes. Let's see what I can come up with. He says, um, he says he's pushing a concept that there's absolutely no data for and that there is absolutely no data that keto has any effect on brain health and that the longest study was six months. So what I would recommend is somebody in that situation, have a consultation with them. They're both wonderful doctors at Loma Linda and they have a book and I would recommend that because they are saying you don't need the fat. There's no proof that it will do anything for, I mean, you do need fat, omega-3 fatty acids and that generally can be accomplished by about one tablespoon of ground flax a day but I don't know anybody in the whole food plant-based world that promotes keto or recommends it for any disease, particularly Alzheimer's. So I really refer you to the work of the Shares Eyes and maybe even have a consultation with them. Okay. Uh, Brooke says, is a conditioned cram circuit 
is it still a conditioned cram circuit when we're binging on whole natural foods, carrots, potatoes? Uh, you know, I don't know, but anybody that uses the word binge for any reason, I recommend that they don't do the ultimate weight loss program, that they have a consultation with Dr. Doug Lyle because binging is a psychological disorder for the most part. And that needs to be addressed with somebody that can really deal with that because if you're binging for whatever reason, unless it's, well, not unless, but often binging does come from a history of restricting dieting, the weighing and measuring programs, people usually end up with some type of a binge eating disorder, but binging on whole natural food, if there's nothing else in the environment, I would often say is because they, people just aren't, that it feels like they're binging because if you're eating very low caloric dense food, you have to eat a lot more food in terms of volumes and how many pounds you eat. And so it can feel like binging because the stomach is distended and because you're eating a lot. But if you're not gaining weight, if you're staying the same or losing weight, then that's how much food you need to eat. But what I would do is, is definitely have a consultation with Dr. Doug Lyle or another one of the psychologists who are plant-based because he will he's an expert in that and he's helped many people with binging on whole natural food because uh, you've got to figure out why you're doing it. And, uh, and I think he can help you because he's helped a lot of people stop that behavior. All right. Well, it's, oh, uh, the author's name is Sherzai, S-A, I'll type it in, S-H-E-R-Z-A-I. Uh, the, the husband is Dean, D-E-N-A, and the wife's name is Aisha, I think it's spelled A-Y-E-S-H-A. Um, Jessica says total cholesterol significantly dropped on the ultimate weight loss plan, but triglycerides are still high, although they have dropped some started the plan January, unless you have any tips, I would just keep doing it. You know, sometimes numbers can get worse before they get better, because if you have fat on your body, that's what your fuel is. Your body's eating that fat. So you're still on a high fat diet while you're losing weight. They've never been proximate to the experience, uh, says Anthony. Oh, hi from Ag Aguanga. I don't even know where that is. Um, what is the book, please? I, um, the, I don't know what book you're meaning, but I think you might mean the end of Alzheimer's. And I believe that's the Sher's Eyes book. So I think I only have one more question here. This is from Colleen. And it, the question is, is how do we feel about fruit and vegetable days for weight loss? I think it's a terrible idea. And uh, this is uh, something that John Pierre will address for those of you that are in the group that can see him addressing this because he was the one that thought of this and but he didn't think of it for weight loss. He uses this with people for more of a kind of a mind thing. And I, I think there can be some value in certain situations. Like for example, when you're traveling, uh, sometimes in certain countries, like when I've been on the cruise, it's really hard to get a sweet potato. It's hard to get a starch, even like rice without oil. And so what it teaches you is that you're not going to die if all you have is fruits and vegetables. I've done one fruit and vegetable day and I've done one all vegetable day. And there were very specific reasons that I did that. I find them in general, very difficult when you, when you don't have starch, not impossible, but difficult. So it, it helps people know that they can do it and they won't die just from fruits and vegetables. And the idea is, is to eat 70% of your calories from vegetables and about 30% from fruit. Now, I think they can be great as a reset. Like if somebody does go off plan, see, I don't, I don't like the idea of restricting because then you get into that uh, binge restrict repeat cycle. But if people go off plan the idea of a fruit and vegetable day isn't to lower the calories so they'll lose weight, but to reset the palate because you're taking out the fat, the sugar, the salt, the flour, the alcohol. So, you know, you can accomplish the same thing with just doing juices or smoothies. Smoothies often tend to be too sweet depending on what you put in them and the same thing with juices. But JP, John Pierre uses these fruit and vegetable days with some of his clients for more of a mental aspect. And the thing is, is anybody with a history of anorexia or bulimia, current or past, should not be doing these kind of fruit and vegetable days or any kind of restriction. I mean, they're certainly healthy that you will lose weight if all you eat is fruit and vegetables because of the caloric density, but I don't recommend it for weight loss because to me, starch is the most important component for your hunger drive, no starch, no satiety. So that's what I recommend. Yep, so end of Alzheimer's. So 
I think I got through all the questions in about an hour. What do I eat on my birthday, Chef AJ? I eat on my birthday what I eat any other day. We, I, I, Hannah yams and roasted Hannah yam and broccoli is my favorite meal. Now, this year on my birthday, I'll be in Florida, so I guess I'll eat whatever they make. But, uh, but I, you know, I'm, I eat what I eat food. I don't, I don't look at food for celebration or medication anymore. I use it. I look at it as fuel. So uh, Chloe, we've typed in the link several times. So if you can scroll up or down, you'll see it uh, Type there, feelfabulousover40.com slash register. If it's not showing the links, then I'm saying it feelfabulousover40.com slash register. Let's see if there's any other questions. I don't think so. Well, this worked pretty good. I think I'm told that the, the quality of the video is much better than the first time I tried. So I'm gonna, Cindy says she loves potatoes, me too. So that's it. I'll be doing this probably once a month. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll just stay on for a couple of suggestions, uh, suggestions, a couple of seconds, if you have any more questions. Jennifer says, I'm a March baby. What do you put on yams? I, you know, I don't have to put anything on them. I've neuroadapted to the point that I really do love and prefer the taste of whole natural food. So to me, a sweet potato, it's like eating cake. So I wouldn't put anything on cake. So I eat the sweet potatoes and I eat them with the broccoli and I love it. But if you wanted to put balsamic on, I mean, sometimes I've actually put the uh, the sweet heat on the on the Japanese. So I do do that occasionally. Yep. Oh, wow. The clock is going going so fast. Yeah. Happy holidays to everybody. I will be in Mexico. So if I do go live, it won't be till next year. And I got to figure out how to end this because hold on, I got to slime my first time. Okay. How do you end it? Oh, in Zoom, click end meeting for all. I got to find Zoom, but first I got to say goodbye. Okay. There we go. All right. Well, thanks guys. And uh, yeah. Um, Hashimoto's thyroid, what to eat? Again, question for Goldhammer. Spices for air frying, Ron is saying. I like the pepperoni spice from local spicery. I love putting it on mushrooms and potatoes for uh, air frying. Uh, Genesis, how do you spell the name of the sweet potato? It's like the girl's name, Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H. What can I replace miso with? I don't think anything. I don't think you can. Um, but if it's just because you're staying away from soy, they have brown rice miso. They have a zuki bean miso. So they do make misos that do not have soy in it. Um, all right. That I sometimes binge in the evening on compliant food, refrigerator open and eating, item after item. Yeah, I, I would definitely... Uh, uh, go to esteemdynamics.com and and talk to Dr. Lyle. If you're binging in the evening, it could be what he calls the cram circuit. There are several lectures on YouTube where he explains what the cram circuit is, or there's rich food in the environment. And if there's rich food in the environment, you're always going to eat it. So definitely talk to Dr. Lyle about that. And I'm sorry, that's not something I can help you with. What do you think of horseradish? If you like horseradish, put horseradish on it. Oats, oatmeal. Yeah, I'm not a fan of oatmeal. I'm a fan of the whole oat groat. If you're going to eat oats, that's what I would recommend. So let's see. I'm going to say good night because it's late here. And I want to watch Mrs. Maisel. All right. Take care, you guys. I will see you next month. And please, if you're going to try the free two-week trial of Feel Fabulous Over 40, uh, definitely consider doing it this week because we have that live webinar on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time where I'm going to show you how to make a compliant pie, lemon meringue pie that has never been done before, in my opinion, on whole food plant base without sugar, oil, salt, flour, etc. All right, so take care and good night.